Here's a little bonus unboxing video for tonight. This box arrived a few hours ago and I've been really itching to open it up. But I wanted to finish the ICO 324 project first. The reason I've been anxious to open this up is I'm not entirely sure what's inside of it. I saw a listing on eBay last week for a picture tube. About all the seller knew is that it came from a porthole set and I could tell from the picture that it had a metal cone on it but he couldn't make out a part number on it and he didn't know if it was good or not but it was a very reasonable buy it now so I took a gamble on it judging from the size of this box it's probably a 16 inch well it could be a 12 inch but I don't think a 19 inch would fit in this box it's got a bulge in kind of an odd spot too right about here you think where the, where the ring of the picture tube is, the largest diameter, it might have a bit of a bulge. So maybe it's lying on its side with the face about here and the neck's out this way. Not, not the worst way to ship a picture tube, but not the best either. Actually, the, the way you should ship a picture tube, or say a scope CRT, is to have the face pointing straight up. But I think pretty much every picture tube I've ever had shipped to me, the face was pointing straight down. And it's understandable when I have them sitting around, I, I store them that way too, because it's the most stable position to have the heavy, widest part down. The reason this is a bad idea, though, especially when you're shipping them, is that if there's any debris inside here, and there often are a few little bits that fall off the filament and whatnot, they fall right down onto the phosphor surface. And if it's being shipped and vibrating, that can scratch up the phosphor, can really mess up the front of the picture tube. So if you actually come across any genuine vintage picture tubes still in the shipping boxes, you'll find them that they're actually like this. It's a 5AYP4 I picked up recently. It's my understanding these were used as viewfinders in really early cameras. And if you undo the packaging here, you see that it's actually shipped with the face pointing straight up. Alright, so enough about that. Let's get this box open. Looks like we have a lot of foam in here. Feel it down in there. It does seem like it's lying outside. Wow, this is... I think what he might have done is wrapped this with plastic and then use expanding foam because this is like <laughs> very solidly packed in here. Let's see. Yeah, it's lined up outside. Uh, I think it's the most elaborate shipping, packing rather, I've ever seen on a picture too. And from what I can see, it is indeed 16 inch. And it's metal and it's got the plastic insulating collar around it. These two plastic bags of the expanding foam are like fused together, so uh, I'm going to pause the camera while I dig into this. This may take a little while. I carefully sliced between the two foam blocks and finally started to see it. It's got a big Z on it, so that uh, pretty well confirms it's a Z in it. to the other block, but it's alright, just leave it like that. Alright, so you know what comes next, I get out the Suncor and see if it's actually any good. I've got the good old CR70 hooked up. Oh, and as for what 
model number this CRT is. Judging by the shape, I think it's a real safe bet that it's a 16 GP4. Which is alright, I do have one set that, that could use one of these, but I was really hoping for a 16 EP4. Those are, are quite a bit rarer, because I think only Zenith use them in their porthole sets, whereas a lot of manufacturers use the GP4. Alright, so, first up, well, it's a good sign, film and glow right away. And it's not blue or purple, which would indicate that it might be gassy. Right, so let's crank that up to 6.3. And check for shorts and shorts. Cut off control, zero response, but two guys haven't exactly been warming up too much. And we have virtually no emissions, so <laughs> yeah, I knew it was a gamble. I'll let this sit for a while longer and uh, see if things improve. Well, not even improve, so let's see if we get any meter deflection whatsoever. I've had this powered up for about an hour and we have still got zero zilch nada on the meter even if I increase the filament voltage or drop down the bias. I suppose it's possible that, that the cathode is completely worn out but I've never seen that before. What's far more likely is that we've got a bad connection somewhere. If I'm really lucky it's in these base pins and just like some vacuum tubes I repaired recently, I can just go around and touch each of them up with a soldering iron. If that doesn't do the trick, it's quite possible an internal element has broken loose inside. Either the cathode or possibly one of the grid leads. Uh, that happened a while ago during my Sentinel 430 restoration. And I was actually able to re-weld the broken off lead inside the neck using this. But first let's try touching up these pins and see if that does the trick. Okay, I touched up the solder joints on all of these pins and unfortunately it has made no difference whatsoever. So that just leaves me with one option which is to try to re-weld the elements inside Unfortunately, that's a very delicate operation, and it's very late right now, so I'm going to save that until tomorrow. Something else I dug into. Remember I was talking about the Brunswick 5KR Type 26 tubes and how one of the tubes that came with the set had a dead short? Well, I got curious and pulled off the base, and what do you know? Look at how one of those leads is all twisted around. What do you want to bet that that is why the tube is reading a dead short? So tomorrow I am going to attempt to re-weld the cathode and or grid inside this tube and fix this base. <laughs>